Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and I'm here talking today about masks and everyone wants to make a mask for their loved ones and I wanted to make a pattern so that it would be really easy for you to use and so I wanted to show you what I've learned so far. So while we're going along this is the mask that I'm talking about and these masks are, let me show you what they look like. They have a flexible nose band and they have a section on the inside of the mask where you can go ahead and use, put a little filter if you wanted to. And this is, um, this is shop towels, right Jim? Yes. And what I've done is I've cut the one um, shop towel into thirds. So I took my shop towel and cut it into thirds like that so it was that big and then kind of cut it in half again and then cut the corners off and that gave me six filters that I can use while I'm out and about and then when I come home I can take these in the garbage and take my mask off and wash it in the wash machine so when we have our mask on it looks like this and it has nice pleated nose band. So let me show you how I made mine. So first of all, when we're talking about our masks, I didn't do anything with fancy colors. I used fabric that I already had at home because if I'm going out into the public and exposing myself, um, it kind of defeats the purpose of making a mask. So I'm trying to use stuff that I had at home. So what I found at home was my fabric. And with a half of yard of fabric, you can make six masks. Um, using this pattern. So, and I have also had 3 8 inch elastic and that I used that for my earpiece. But I also found like little rope style elastic that would work fine too. And then for my nose band, I used this wire that I had in the garage and it's called by Vigoro and it's garden training wire. And what I did is I cut it and I'll have the dimensions for you here to these lengths and then I took my needle nose pliers and twisted just turn the ends and clamp them down and then when I was making my sleeve of my pattern I just used a quarter inch seam along the edge here and then I was able to go in through where I have my filter, I can put my filters in, and then just install that piece of wire in here. And you can actually put it through the washing machine because it is a plastic coated wire. It washes in the washing machine great and this fits, fits snugly enough so that it doesn't come apart. So let's take a look at our pieces of fabric. So again, this fabric that I had here at home was a half yard of fabric and it yielded three, um, sorry, six pieces of fabric that I'm gonna, I can use to make a mask with each one. So let's go to our sewing machine and take a look at what we have here. Also, if you don't have elastic, you can make bias strips and this was little ties that I was making um, for my daughter's baby stuff. But this is just bias strip that you can make and then you could use it to put on the corners of your mask like you could sew it right to the edges or you can do a 40 inch long one and then do it to the top and bottom and you would have a tie on either side that works too it's very hard to find elastic right now so if you don't have elastic you can always make bias strips on your own and then make that out of your project so let's take a look here Let's go in the room and I'll take these with me. So I've cut out my piece of fabric and this is my only piece of fabric that's needed for the mask. And so then I would take my fabric so that the right sides are facing each other and I would line up my edges so that it's even. There you go. And then I would take it to my sewing machine and I'm doing a quarter inch seam all along this edge. I don't like to start way back here because it sometimes can make it pecker. I'd rather do a, a go forward a little bit 
and then back stitch a little. And then I'm going to seam it for just a little while here. And what I want to do is my goal is to leave like a three inch or two and a half inch hole in the center, which will then become the um, place where we can put, insert our filter later. So then I didn't cut anything yet. I just put it back down and then I'm going to back seam and then I'm going to sew all the way to the edge. Okay. And we can take a look at this, see what we got. So the idea for this mask is that I am trying to make something that's really quick that I can make in like 10 or 15 minutes so that I can make masks from all of my family members and make sure that everyone stays safe and um, so that they don't have, it just cuts on down on the amount of germs that our other people are being exposed to as well as helps my loved ones get a little less germs as well. We know it doesn't completely protect against COVID, but now since they're saying to go ahead and wear a mask out in public, we are going to make masks for our loved ones and let them wear them out in public. And like I said, I'm using product that I have at home from projects that I have done before so that I'm not going out in public just to purchase more cutesy type fabric. I'm just using what I have. It's a great way to use up odds and ends, and it's also a great way to just use what you have at home. So I'm just going to show you. Here's right here is what this, you finger press it out. And I'll show you another piece here that I've already taken iron. Here's this same piece and I've ironed it with an iron and you can see that right here is the opening. Now I'm going to take my work and turn it and I want to sew a seam along each side so I um, fasten down these two raw edges. What they're, My goal of what I want to show you is, let's see here, when we're done we want our fabric to ha look like that. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I have the fabric here and I'm going to open it up a little bit. And I'm just going to place it on my sewing machine and I'm just taking this that right there is the center line and just put, lining it up with the edge of my presser foot there. So I can make a nice seam and what I'm doing is trying to make sure that I don't catch the second layer of fabric, that I'm only seaming down that one layer of fabric. Okay, almost done with this one side. And once you get the one side done, then you have to go ahead and do the other side. So you have two sides that you're working on. There you go. And then, and I think what I'll do is not really cut anything. I'm just going to turn it and see again. I can't place it right on that line there. And go down the other direction side. I like to back stitch. Um, I just want it to be as sturdy as it can be. Um, just so that it can be machine washed and not fall apart. And so like I said, this mask is a pleated mask and it also has a nose band and it also has a little pocket where you can insert a little either a vacuum cleaner bag filter or you could insert the shop towels any anything that gives you additional filtration is always good uh, the good thing that Jim reminded me about the shop towels is if they accidentally go through the washing machine it's fine they don't disintegrate and make a mess in your washing machine so that is always a nice 
So there I have my two seams and I have, you see where it's kind of folded like an inch and a half away from the edge. This is going to be the inside of your mask. So this, where this filter in, where you insert the filter is not going to get in the way of where I'm pleating my work. And so then what I would do from here is I would take my seven inch piece of elastic and I'm going to be doing two seams, one along this edge and one along this edge. And, and, and I will be inserting the elastic as I go. And I'll show you just a little bit right here. And then I'll show you one where it's already done. So you want to scoot it all the way up to the edge and then you just put it underneath your machine and you want to try and get this as close as you can to the edge so it's nice. Okay. And what, again, a quarter inch seam. And then make and stir the back stitch up several times. And then I would go all the way down here until I get close to the other side. And then I will be putting in my other piece of elastic. Good. So then I can take another piece of elastic, and you can see I can still put my hand in here. And you could go pin this first before you do it, but the, the idea of making these masks is to be able to do it quickly and not and with minimal work so you can be done with it. But if you wanted to go pin them before you do your sewing, that's perfectly fine too. I've done it both ways. So... And then I would come back down this other side and catch the elastic here on this side and then make sure it's not twisted. And so this side as well. And if it's gathered a little bit, that's totally fine because your elastic is going to do that and it's totally fine. There you go. And under there again. This time I think I'll stop a little sooner so I can get in here. And I'm making sure my elastic is not twisted. I don't want the elastic twisted otherwise it's going to be twisted when it goes around your ear and that would not be comfortable at all. I don't think. There you go. Making sure to back stitch over your elastic to keep it in place. And then you cut off your little excess strings and any little pieces that are hanging out a little bit, you can cut those off. And you can see how quickly it can go when you get your rhythm down. You can do a lot of these masks in short order. I the, Some of the others, like the Olsen mask, I really like that pattern, but it took me almost two hours to make one and so that wasn't practical for me to be able to do it for all of my loved ones. So you see this is the inside of the mask and um, all I have to do to finish it now is do a seam all the way around the outside. And let's take a look at the seam here. So this is the seam that I did all the way around the outside and then after I was done Actually, this one, I folded the pleats, and then I put the seam all at once. So it was just one seam all the way around. And if you fold your pleats, let me show you how to fold the pleats. So this is the inside. So when I'm folding my pleats, I want the pleats to be so that my nose piece... See how on this one, this nose piece right here is right here? And it doesn't, it's it's not like this, where the nose piece, the pleat would go in like that, because then it's not, um, it's not as comfortable, the fabric is in the way. So having it so that the nose piece is down at the bottom, 
is really good. And I've seen people do both when they were doing their mask, but it seemed like it fit better if you put it so that the part that's going to be facing your face is down toward the table and the pleat is on top. And all you do is you just pinch it and you grab. You want to do at least three pleats. And if you can make them so they're not overlapping each other too much, see how that one's, they're right next to each other. And that one might be a little tiny bit big. So let's make it a little smaller. And then and then you can always take your iron and iron these um, before you actually seam them into place. So you see how there. That one that's pretty good. And then I would just go over to this other side and try and make my pleats. I can't finish it because I haven't done the seam all the way around the edge but you can see how those pleats work like that. And then when you get it all pinned, then you can do your whole seam all the way around and then you're done. And that's how easy this mask is to do because you only have to cut out one piece of fabric and by folding it in half, it gives you your slot for your filter, your additional filter and then it has the elastic on the outer edges and it fits very comfortably and snug around your nose. So I hope this helps you create masks for your loved ones and then you're able to make them quickly.